and welcome back to Granted Gardens. My name is Melissa and today we have got quite a harvest of cucumbers from the garden. So I thought that I would grab you guys and take you along as I make my homemade pickles. Cucumbers and tomatoes are my two most absolute favorite things to grow in the garden and that's because you can do so much with them. Uh, plus they're super tasty. Uh, but for me, my main squeeze is pickles, okay? So we have a ton of different kinds of pickles going on in this house at this very moment. Um, I've got about two different types of refrigerator pickles. I've got um, a whole boatload of, of canned pickles. Um, and then I also have uh, pickles that we actually are setting out fermenting. So we do them all different kinds of ways. There's really no method to the madness. Um, but today I'm going to show you guys how I prepare my pickles before I can them and some of the recipes that are my easy go-tos. All right, so here I have my setup. Um, I've already gotten started a bit. So I've got my pickles or my, my cucumbers uh, that I picked from the garden. Here I have an ice bath that I like to dunk my slices in. Um, this is going to be a big perk for the canning process. If you're refrigerating your pickles right after you make them, then this step is not required. So this step is really here to help you in your canning process to keep your pickles crunchy after you can them. Um, so this year I've done a little bit of experimenting when it comes to this step. Some of the research that I found is they say to ice bath um, your cucumbers for up to two hours before canning. Um, other research that I found says to use salt um, or salt water um, and let them sit in salt water for two hours. So I've tried it both ways. And some of the stuff that I've canned this year, I haven't had a chance to try them yet. Obviously, I canned them. Um, and then this time, I decided that I was going to, like, be, like, you know, real creative. And I was going to do both. So this is ice water with salt in it. And we're going to just put our cucumber slices in here and let them sit for two hours. And then, I don't know, at some point, I'll update you guys on which method worked, if any of them. All right, so here you're just seeing me slice my uh, cucumbers. Um, I don't know, I'm not like too particular. I like them, um, if we're doing canning, I prefer them be a little bit thicker. Um, but if it's refrigerator pickles, sometimes like I'll do some thick, some thin, just to have a variety. But I've noticed that the thinner pickles, if you cut them really, really thin and then try and can them, uh, they just, they're definitely never crunchy. So we're gonna try and get some crunch out of these this time. Uh, make sure that you save your ends of your cucumbers for the chickens, chicken snacks. Sometimes as a gardener, you get these like really spectacular harvests. And I'm not talking about like abundance, I'm talking about beauty, right? Like these really beautiful fruits. You guys, this might be the most beautiful cucumber I've ever seen in my life. Please look at this. Isn't that amazing? Like, does that not just scream perfection? I'm having a hard time justifying cutting this one up because I just feel like it's so beautiful. It just deserves to be eaten as a whole pickle. I don't know. Perfection. Okay, so for the sake of like full disclaimers here and if anyone's following along um I did wash these cucumbers before I started um so you want to make sure that everything is extremely clean when you're canning um my cutting board and my knife are fresh out of the dishwasher um so they're well disinfected I washed the cucumbers really really well make sure that there isn't any bugs on them or any like you know garden leftovers dirt and such okay Executive decisions. Do we chop or do we not chop? Okay. Um, okay, we're chopping one, but this one is definitely staying whole. Probably should have mentioned this. I'm water bath canning um, my pickles today, and my like water bath canner doesn't hold like extra, extra large jars. So, like, hypothetically, I would think it would be really cool to can whole pickles but I mean you can really only fit like two in 
a jar and it just doesn't make sense so I do slice them like I've done spears before um, which is like the closest I can get I guess but I don't know I just think it would be really cool to like can whole pickles don't have the materials for it so as an alternative I just refrigerate my whole pickles um, and eat them as I can um, they obviously don't last as long but it's it's an option so this here is um, our fermenting pickles. So um, one of my friends, Lori, shared this recipe with me a couple years ago, and I absolutely love it. I look forward to doing this every single year. Um, and so this year, I'm actually keeping my pickles whole in this jar. We got this massive ball jar, which is awesome. Um, we've got um, garlic and dill in here. Uh, so I'm just going to graciously add this beautiful pickle to this jar so that he too can be eaten whole. And then I'm just going to put my little cabbage leaf back in on top to make sure that everybody stays under the liquid. Okay, so I've got all of my cucumbers cut up. I've got them in their salty ice bath. Man, this thing is full. I'm gonna try and push these guys under a little bit. Um, make sure that they're all submerged. And then I'm going to set a timer for two hours. So this is my third year uh, water bath canning. So I am getting to the point where I'm much more comfortable with it. Um, but I still always go to some sort of a recipe um, for canning um, just to make sure that, you know, I'm being as safe as possible and ball is my number one go-to. So essentially during these two hours, I'm going to grab my one of my ball books um, and I'm gonna browse through and look for some creative recipes. I already have quite a stash of uh, bread and butter pickles and then I also have I think what they referred to as cucumber sandwich pickles which I'm not really sure like how different that is uh, between bread and butter but um, there was a few different ingredients in there. I like to try different stuff so that it's kind of like a fun experiment when you open the jar you never really know you know what you're gonna get right um so i'm gonna just look through here and see if they've got anything like really different and maybe get a little get a little crazy on this recipe we'll see okay so slight change there uh went into a different book it is still a ball book um uh, but this is their preserving guide to preserving um, so this is just another one I have. It's a little bit smaller than the other, um, but I've, I guess, kind of knocked out some of the fun ones that were in there already. So um, I'm going to use this book here, and we're going to do kosher style pickles. Um, I tend to get a little creative when I do anything, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, so I don't have quite the amounts of measurements that they ask for here in the book, so I'm just going to adjust... Uh, appropriately. So the recipe here is calling for eight pounds of pickles, which I do not have eight pounds. I actually have exactly three pounds, so I will do some minor adjusting, but I'll probably just read the recipe uh, verbatim from the book for you guys if you are following along. Um, but I'm gonna probably tweak ours a little bit. You do wanna be careful when you're canning. It's best to follow a recipe because you know that it's tried and true. Well, if you're getting it from accredited source um, or a credible source, um, either or, uh, then you know it's, it, it's tried and true, it, it's safe. You don't have to worry about uh, getting the measurements you know, spot on or not. However, I've become like maybe like just a just a little bit of a rebel canner recently when it comes to stuff like this pickles I got this all right so I've got my canner um, my canning pot I got it started I turned on the heat this takes forever to get going so I'm not too worried about that um, we're gonna mix some of the ingredients here cook them up and then I have my um, 
jars here fresh out of the hot steamy dishwasher so they're nice and sanitized all right so first is going to be the vinegar we want one quart of vinegar um i am going to be mixing my vinegar here i prefer having at least a little bit of apple cider vinegar in my pickles as opposed to all white vinegar so that's what's fun about pickles is once you get the hang of it or if you're refrigerating them once you get the hang of canning you can get creative if you're refrigerating your pickles like as soon as you make them they're going in the fridge you're not canning them you can get as creative as you want you can put anything in there that'll be fine just as long as you eat them within a couple weeks all right so i'm gonna do my vinegar Then we need three fourths cup sugar and one half cup pickling salt or salt. Um, I do actually have pickling salt, so I'll use that. Um, but I've also done it with regular salt too. adding some water uh, instructions call for one quart water obviously I'm doing a little bit less because I have a little bit less so the recipe calls for um, ball pickling spices which I don't have ball pickling spices so uh, I'm gonna just throw my own concoction of pickling spices together. I laugh a little bit at myself while I'm like while I'm doing this. I'm like I'm laughing because I'm like, oh, we're gonna follow a recipe. I said that, like I said that to you guys. This is how I do things. I never actually follow a recipe. <laughs> I'll like read it and then I don't know. I always end up taking a new direction. Okay, so pickling spices, and I'm just kind of rolling with this. So we've got uh, allspice. Okay. Um, you know, pinch this, dab that. Uh, we've got mustard seed. And we've got celery seed. Uh, coriander, which this is from our garden, which is pretty exciting. Uh, ground cinnamon, so we're just adding some cinnamon in there. Whew. Some bay leaves. My lucky number with bay leaves is always three. I don't know why. It's what I do. And there's just a reason. I If there is a reason, I don't know what it is. But I always have to put three leaves in everything that I make. And uh, last but not least, it says uh, red pepper flakes. Um, these I believe are Thai peppers from our garden a couple years ago or maybe last year so we'll just throw them in voila pickling spices a la Melissa okay now we need to go out and we need to get our dill the recipe calls for three heads obviously I'm working with a little bit less so I'm just gonna go get one head maybe a couple leaves because I think that like the little fronds of the dill leaf or the dill plant I think are so pretty especially when you're canning stuff um, it just looks really pretty like pressed up against the side of the jar and I don't know I like the look of it I'll take this one and a couple of these That'll get us there. Okay, so we're not gonna add our fresh dill yet, but with this little concoction that we've got going here, we can turn it on. We wanna bring this to a boil. Oh, there was one thing that I almost forgot. 
um, that I bought that I'm super excited. I literally bought it specifically for canning season, for pickling season, and it is rainbow peppercorns. So again, like I get really into the whole like aesthetic part of canning too. Like I'm, I'm getting there. I'm just, I enjoy it. I love it. And so these little rainbow peppercorns are like all different colors. And so again, they look really pretty in the jar. Okay, quick glimpse again back at the recipe that I'm apparently no longer following. Um, so it says three tablespoons of the ball mixed pickling spice, which we compensated for. Then it goes in to say um, the rest of the ingredients here on the right hand side, which is all the stuff that we basically put in that was pickling spices. So uh, I think we're covered. It does say um, hot red peppers. Hmm. Red hot pepper. Well, I don't have one of those, but we can go and check the peppers out front, I suppose. So, little mishap happened with my peppers out front. I labeled them all with a purple Sharpie, and they got sun bleached, and so now I can't read the labels. So this might be a surprise. Are. There's two that are ready. There's my label. Plain Jean. All right. We don't know what they are, but here we go. We'll at least put one of them in uh, our pickles. Okay, so we're gonna just go with like one of these. Maybe only half of one. I don't know. I'm. I'm considering tasting this on camera. I don't know if it's a good idea because I honestly don't know what that is. And then um, some garlic. So this is actually homegrown garlic. Didn't get too, too big, but um, we're going to use some of that here for us too. Okay, so I am going to take out the seeds once I cut this up. Because like I said, I know this is hot peppers. Like I know it's a spicy pepper. We did that on purpose. We put all of our spicy peppers out front in those little containers so that we wouldn't have to worry about um, anything cross-pollinating. I know that there's like, I don't know, there's there's two concepts here. One being that uh, things do not cross-pollinate in the same season. So hypothetically, even if the um, pepper, the hot peppers and the sweet peppers did cross pollinate this year the season um the flavors wouldn't change until you saved the seeds and planted them again next year it would be next year's saved seeds um that could potentially um alter the flavors or the heat but then i've also heard people swear up and down that they've planted sweet peppers next to hot peppers and that um their sweet peppers turned hot so i'm not going to risk it we just separated everything and put the hot stuff in the front yard so we don't have to worry about it. All right, I'm over here chit-chatting and this is boiling. So we're gonna move this down to a simmer and we're just gonna stir it up here and then we're gonna let this go for about 15 minutes. It smells so good. Usually the vinegar is like really strong to inhale when it's going through the boiling process. Uh, be careful because it might just knock you out. Um, but I don't know, this smells really good. Well, this is just a lovely angle, but you know what? It works. It works for what we're trying to accomplish right now. Um, so anyways, I am removing the seeds. I've chopped my pepper up. It's bitty, bitty pieces, and I'm just removing the seeds. I can kind of, um, if you just roll the pepper, uh, like between your fingers like this, the seeds tend to just pop right out. So it doesn't take too much work. Like, okay, this is just a little, like, this is just a little tip, just a little end. Okay. Oh yeah, that's fire. That's fire. That's fire. <laughs> I think these are cayenne peppers. All right, we're definitely not putting a ton in these pickles. Like, maybe a piece or two. Because <laughs> that had heat, man. Woo! Okay, so now what I'm doing with my garlic, like, I'm not going to get super crazy here. It doesn't need to be perfect. 
um, because it's gonna just be sitting in the jar. So quite frankly, like you don't even really have to cut it up. I mean, you could put in whole chunks like this. Uh, like I said, I really like um, the aesthetic concept of like canning. So I am going to chop them up just big chunks. Um, ooh, I'm throwing them at you. Big chunks like that, just so that I can kind of layer them throughout so that there's not just like one chunk in one area. You can kind of see it more throughout um, throughout the jar. Now the skin on this garlic is purple. Um, it's actually really pretty. And like, again, you know, you don't necessarily even, there's no rule saying like you have to peel your garlic. If it's pretty and purple, you can probably leave a little bit of the skins on there. Yes, they will end up coming off and they might get a little floaty on you in the jar, but you're picking out your pickles anyway. So it's not like you're eating it's not like you're just like taking a spoon and eating the whole thing. You know what I mean? You pick your pickles out anyway, so you can pick all of that stuff out of it as well. While the um, brine is cooking, simmering, uh, we can go ahead and start filling our jars. Um, so I'm gonna take the hot jars out of the dishwasher and we're gonna start just putting in our cucumbers. We wanna make sure that we leave a half inch head space. We are still going to fill the jars with the liquid as well. Um, but you just wanna make sure that you're leaving enough room, half inch head space, just half inch head space in each jar. Pause for cute things. Aren't they adorable? They're so cute. Yes, you are. We're gonna start one at a time. So we got our jar, and we're going to fill it with our cucumber slices. And as we're doing this, we're gonna incorporate some of our garlic and some of our dill. You can always go out and pick more dill, whoops, if we need to. You can always chop up more garlic if we need to. So no need to be shy. Just whatever looks nice. So we are well through the garlic. I love adding garlic in my pickles. I kind of want to pack it pretty tightly because once you water bath or once you can, um, any if there if there's any like extra space, these will kind of lift up, and then you're gonna have a big old gap at the bottom of your jar. And I still have not perfected not getting the gap. <laughs> but I am sure trying. All right, so we've got that, and then um, I'm gonna toss in my one piece of mellow pepper here for good luck. Okay, so that three pounds of cucumbers made us three jars. So after we've got them filled with our cucumbers, we're gonna go ahead and pour over um, our hot liquid. I am giving my liquid a nice stir here because I want to incorporate any and all of those um, seasonings as much as possible. And then we'll go ahead and we'll pour it in. I'm a chicken when it comes to pouring. Um, so I'm gonna use my ladle um, and I'm gonna just ladle out. Um, and again, we're looking to leave one half inch head space. And if there aren't um, enough spices in here, like I had mentioned, I really like kind of having those different colored uh, peppercorns in here. If there aren't enough in your jar, you can always add more. Then next, what you wanna do to ensure that it's going to seal properly, you wanna get a paper towel or a napkin, uh, moisten it with vinegar, and then wipe the rim, um, the very top of the rim, and then around the edge really really well make sure that that's very clean before you put your lid on it um, otherwise it can affect the sealing process so you can see it i have vinegar here i'm going to just gently go across the lid right across the mouth here and then on the sides Ooh, this is hot and then once i'm confident that that's nice and clean i can go ahead and put my lid on fingertip tight Once I'm done with this one, I'm gonna go ahead, next I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna repeat the process with these two and then we'll get these in the canner. All right, so I got them all filled, I got the lids on, I labeled all of them. Um, one of the things that I do a little differently is if I got the recipe from Ball, I actually underline Ball, 
That way, if I really like them, I kind of know where to go back to get the recipe again. Y'all saw how many uh, canning books I had, so I don't know. Most of, most of them are ball books, but it does kind of help narrow it down a little bit when I try to go back to find the recipe. Um, so next, we're just going to take our jars. We're gonna put them in the canner. Uh, full disclosure, I don't pack um, empty jars in my canner. So I only have three. This canner will fit six, I believe. Um, maybe more than that. Um, and so the concept there is that to make sure that nothing like boun boun bounces up against each other or breaks, um, you can actually put empty jars in the areas that you are not canning um, just to make sure that there's not too much movement. I've never done that. I've also never had a problem. Hopefully this isn't the time that uh, I experience any issues. Now I can just lower this into the canner. We wanna make sure that the water covers the jars at least one inch. Now that we're lowered in, we're gonna check our water. We are a little short, very short. So um, so I'm gonna add more water. Okay, so now that we've got um, the waters covering the jars at least an inch, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put our lid on, make sure that our uh, heat is all the way up, and we're gonna bring this to a full rolling boil. Once it's come to a full rolling boil, then you're going to let it cook and let it boil for 15 minutes. Um, once that 15 minutes is done, you can shut off your heat. You wanna remove the pot from the heat, but don't remove the jars quite yet. Let them sit five minutes. It's been on a rolling boil now for 15 minutes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut off the, the heat. I would initially take this off the heat, like scooch it, <laughs> but we've got a few other things going on here <laughs> right now. So it's gonna, I'm, I might try and push it back a little bit, but it's probably still gonna be on the heat. That's not a problem. We're just gonna let it sit for five minutes. Um, and then after the five minutes, we'll go ahead and we'll take out our jars. While you're waiting your five minutes, prepare a space for you to set your jars. Um, I just use a towel here. I have it laid down on the counter. It's at a, a section of the counter that we don't use too terribly often. Uh, the idea here is that you're going to set your jars in this area uh, for 24 hours and you don't wanna disturb them if possible. Looks as though all went well. No cracks or breaks. So we're gonna lift out uh, the jar, you can see there's a little bit of space there at the bottom, but I tried. Um, you also don't really want to disturb this too much. I know you might feel compelled to kind of knock this water off the top, um, but to be honest with you, if you want to be extra safe, it's best that you don't disturb this as much as possible. So we're going to just move these over to our towel. So actually, they look pretty good. There's not, like this one does have a little bit of space at the bottom, but everything else looks fairly well packed in there. Um, and it is still bubbling, that's okay, that's normal. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and let these guys sit for 24 hours, at least 12, 12 to 24 hours, um, before we go and put them in storage. So here, this is what uh, virtually every single one of my weekends looks like. Uh, happy canning season. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to sharing more with you soon.